Communication has always been vital to man, and throughout the centuries, he's contrived ways and means of getting in touch with his neighbors. The dawn of the 19th century heralded the development of two devices vital to communication as we know it, the electric cell and the electromagnet. And so it was that in 1835, Samuel Morse brought about the telegraph system using the worldwide code of dots and dashes which bears his name. Forty years later, on June 2nd, 1875, Alexander Graham Bell became responsible for a new era of communication when his many experiments finally produced the telephone. Then, early in the 20th century, Guglielmo Marconi applied a different line of reasoning to existing knowledge and formed the principle of radio. Through the years, the shape has changed and existing developments have added to its versatility, but Marconi's principle remains. Surprisingly enough, the concept of television, accredited to Paul Napkow, goes back to 1884. But this audiovisual media was delayed in its development by that of radio, since the unique difference is that television converts an image into electrical impulses for transmission, then later reconverts them to a copy of the original. Advances in telecommunication have been rapid, and with the arrival of the space age came the satellite. It has brought live international events to the screens of viewers thousands of miles from the... International Telecommunications Limited was formed in January 1971 as a limited liability company with the government of Jamaica and the British company Cable and Wireless West Indies Limited as partners. Hell and Duke Street, this seven-story complex houses the major section of the company's operations. A staff of some 360 carry out clerical and technical duties, making their contribution to the many public services offered. Of the 285 circuits now in use, 121 are connected to the Jamaica Telephone Company. As the demand increases, more circuits may be added to the maximum capacity of 1,600. This equipment provides for the generation of test patterns, which conform to either of the two worldwide television standards, and overseas programs to and from the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation are monitored in order to maintain a high signal quality. Perhaps the most well-known facility provided by the company is the Cablegram service, offered to or from almost any part of the world. The growth has been somewhat retarded due to the rapid expansion in the use of telephone and telex, but it's significant to note that in 1972, over 400,000 cablegrams were processed by Jamintel. The Telegraph Center regulates all telegraph telex and customer lease circuits which terminate in or transit through Jamaica. And in 
order to ensure satisfactory levels of performance, constant monitoring and testing is carried out. high-grade functioning of all international transmission facilities, including five groups in the Jamaica-Florida cable, with a total of 76 channels in use, and two groups in the Jamaica-Cayman link, with 13 channels. Checks are made on traffic, congestion, and defective lines. This panel even tells us where the fault lies and what it is. Thus, time taken to trace any fault is drastically cut. On the sixth floor, two microwave transmitter receivers provide links to the Jamaica-Florida cable at seven miles in St. Andrew and Prospect Pen in St. Thomas. At the output stage, the signals are fed to two dish antennae on the roof of the building. From this point, Traffic is distributed to both relay stations. At seven miles, a battery of equipment, which is constantly under checks for efficient operation, forms actual physical links with undersea cables to the North American mainland via Florida City and the canal zone in Panama. The satellite earth station in Prospect Pen, some 24 miles from Kingston, provides both satellite transmission facilities and the undersea cable link to Grand Cayman. This is the nearest site to the capital, providing a natural shielding from man-made radio interference because of the low surrounding hills. In this tranquil atmosphere, staff of 35, 21 of whom are technical, man the station, which can simultaneously carry 960 telephone circuits, as well as one color television circuit. To ensure continuous operation and to facilitate preventative maintenance, all major circuitry, with the exception of television, is duplicated. Nothing is left to chance, and two standby generating plants capable of handling the entire station load are kept ready for emergencies. Most operations are automatically effective, but as usual, checks are done all along the line. The final transmission link to the satellite is this huge dish antenna, which by itself weighs some 300 tons. A narrow beam of radio waves are shot through this horn and, a few seconds later, are collected by the satellite's antenna. This information is then retransmitted to other stations in the contact zone. The clear area shows the section of the globe in constant contact with Jamaica via satellite. These electronic marbles are owned by different conglomerates in the United States of America, including Intelstat, with whom Jam Intel have agreements. Taking into account the cost of the satellite, the rocket, and the personnel needed to place it into a predetermined orbital path, the overall expenditure is in the area of $90 million. Between five and seven years of life are expected, and after that, up goes another to take its place. These synchronous satellites, as they're known, move in an approximately circular orbit around the Earth. Because they move at a speed similar to that of the Earth's rotation, they appear to the observer here to be stationary. It is reception, rather than transmission, which necessitates a dish of so large a diameter. Signals from space are very weak. The waves are caught by the large dish and follow the path indicated by the arrows, 
finally converging in the horn, where they're taken by cable to the control and relayed to the jam and tail center. services already shown, there's a branch office in Montego Bay, as well as coast stations to facilitate ship-to-shore correspondence. At Port Moore in St. Catherine, and here, at Fairview in Kingston, there are transmitting and receiving facilities in that order. Up to about 1962, Jamaica's external telecommunication services were provided exclusively by high-frequency radio which, although fairly reliable, is subject to fading for complete loss under certain conditions. Since the introduction of satellite communication, the need for HF has diminished, but the service has been retained for ship-to-shore dialogue, international press reception, and for use to countries without satellite or cable stations. of Jamintel's operation, which could be considered unique, is the telegraph service to Cuba. The cable represents Jamaica's first physical offshore link, established in 1870, five years before the telephone was even invented, and 35 years after F.B. Morse developed the telegraph. Now, let's make a telephone call and watch the various stages of switching and relaying. From the telephone company, the call is registered in the International Telephone Switching Center. A free line is selected automatically and gives access to the multiplexing equipment which groups all calls, rather like putting everything in its proper place. A microwave transmitter sends it on its way. relayed at Prospect Pen and picked up 22,000 miles in space, then retransmitted to other Earth stations where the call is relayed in the normal fashion to the receiver. On a call to New York, the time lapse from the operator's dialing to reception is only about 10 seconds. Something like this. Of course, in order to operate and maintain such a highly technical business, thorough training is absolutely necessary, and Jamintel attaches vital importance to this sector of its operations. A variety of training courses are undertaken, including a session at the College of Arts, Science and Technology. This is followed by an eight-month course in Barbados in radio techniques. There are further courses in England, and from time to time, even the most senior staff are required to undertake refresher courses. In a country like Jamaica, with a highly industrialized capital city of well over half a million, the value of Jamintel services must be obvious. Hello, hello? Operator? Yes, I'd like to speak... Pardon me? You're unable to ask? But look, my, my dear, I've been trying to find a long, long time to get this number. It's a rather urgent, you see. It's a matter of death. And look, my dear, I... Just consider sorry, I'm what would happen if the country was unable to communicate with the outside world for just one day. The economy could be seriously injured. There'd be no news from abroad. We would be unaware of the value of our own money on the world market. The entire... But now we're getting carried away. 
because that really is a different story. But we're still not getting through all the circuit things to be indeed. I'm hungry and tired and everything, my dear. I'm not blaming you really, but um, could you see if you can put me through?